Hello everyone and welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to look at a viewer question that came in on our Polygon Pour video about making Polygon Pours look more professional. Now, specifically, this question is about the placement of pour between pads on SMD components, such as small passives that might come in like a 0603, 0805 type package. We're going to look at how to control where that Polygon Pour appears and there are some simple strategies that you can use in the PCB layout as well as in your footprints when you're creating your component libraries. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along. Let's get started. So before we get started with this demo, let's take a look at that original viewer question. Fernando Pita 770 writes, how the heck do you prevent polygon pour on components or certain components? Trying to prevent the pour from filling the gaps under a component, for example, or the pour filling the area between the two pads of a resistor package, i.e. 1206. It would be nuts to do a polygon cutout on every single component. You're right, Fernando Pita 770, it would be crazy to manually place polygon cutouts between all of your SMD pads. You can do it manually, but of course, every time you go to a new component package, you're going to have to manually resize that polygon cutout. And of course, if you were to then go to something like an integrated circuit that has larger lead pitch, you would then have to resize that cutout to fit across all of those different leads where you didn't want the pour to appear. So I'm going to show you how to do this in two ways. You can do this through the design rules, or you can do it by applying cutouts directly inside of your component footprints. So let's jump in and see how to do this. So to show how to do all this, I'm going to use our NRF52 PCB module that we looked at in a series of previous videos. Now, if you zoom in on this module, you will see several examples where we have polygon pour around some SMD components. And that polygon pour does fill the region between pads. So you can see right here on this capacitor C9. The polygon pour does cover the ground pad because we have this polygon pour set up to pour over all same net objects. And you can see that right here in the properties panel. However, it's also filling in this region in between the two pads. In this other case where we have, for example, this component, which is just a thick film resistor, you can see that even with this 0402 package, the polygon pour is also filling in the region between these SMD pads. So. If we wanted to, we could, of course, place this polygon pour cutout and we could snap it to these pad vertices and then just draw it in here manually. So make use of the snap tool on the pad edges and vertices. And then when you draw this in, it will just snap like this. And then we re-pour the polygon. And of course, it clears out all of that copper in between those pads. Now you could copy that region over to all of your other 0402 components. However, what if you have a large crystal like this and you wanna cut out the pour in between these pads? This is obviously not a 0402 component. What you would want to do is in these cases, if you were going to use the polygon cutout for these components, what you can do is actually go into your library for this component and then open up the PCB footprint. And you can put that polygon pour inside of that PCB footprint. So here I'm getting into the PCB library for this project, opening up this footprint. And you can see here that as I open up this footprint, I've already applied a polygon cutout in between these two pads for purposes of this demo. So here I can just adjust it so that it's just right. I can make sure that it's snapping on to the pad edges, kind of like this. When I get it sized just right, then what I can do is I can open up the PCB editor again, and I can do a footprint update inside the PCB editor. So now I have this polygon cut out here just right. And what this cutout is going to do is it's only going to clear out the copper on this top layer when I do the update inside the PCB. So if I just go back over to the PCB, take note of this footprint name, I can go here to tools, update from PCB libraries, just hit OK. And what it's going to do is scan through all of the different components and look for all of the differences and then give you an opportunity to update them. Just for our purposes, I'm only going to update that capacitor. So I want to scroll over to that capacitor footprint. I'm going to select all instances of it, hit Update Selected, and then Accept Changes. When I go through and execute this, you'll see that everything executed successfully. 
And then when I go back here into this component, you can see here now that this polygon cutout appears in this footprint. All I have to do is just re-pour the polygons, and then you see it clears out the copper around that footprint. You can build your components like this if you want, and I think this method works best when you have square pads like this, because you can make sure that the polygon pour perfectly aligns to the edges of these pads. With these curved pads, it leaves these areas here where you have kind of this corner. And of course, anyone that is familiar with uh, etch traps, they're gonna be able to identify that as an etch trap where possibly there's some excess etchant that could accumulate in this little corner here. So that is an option for you. You could do that without having to manually copy over this uh, polygon cutout over to all of your other components. So that's one way to do it. You could even do that on integrated circuits. So for example, let's just suppose on this particular integrated circuit, I want to prevent this polygon pore from filling this region between these pads. Well, that's pretty simple. What I can do is I can go into my PCB lib. I can just open up my other footprint, SOT23-5. And when I open up that footprint, I can then place a polygon cutout around all of these pads. And when I place that cutout, it is then going to prevent any polygon pore from appearing between these pads and underneath the component and between these pads. So you can adjust this how you want to. Of course, you can bring this down and then just put it across these pads. And then you can go through the update process like I showed earlier to bring these updates back into the PCB layout. That's one way to do it. And of course, it requires you having some foresight on this when you're building your PCB libraries. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, you can certainly use polygon uh, cutouts, but what about keepout layers? Well, keepout layers are also useful, but keepout layers are normally used in footprints in order to keep out everything from a specific region of the footprint. So keepout layers are an option, but they're gonna affect more than just the polygon pore. So I would advise using keepout layers if you want to either cut out everything on all layers, like have a ground pass through directly underneath that component, or if you also want to prevent routing in one of these regions, such as routing in between these two rows of pads. So keepouts are an option, but specifically for polygon pour, you should use a polygon cutout inside of the footprint. Now, there's another way to do all of this without actually putting polygon cutouts directly into your footprints. And I think it is a bit of a more sophisticated way, but it's certainly a better way because it doesn't require you setting up different libraries that enforce these polygon cutouts in certain designs. So what you can do is instead of using the polygon cutout, you can actually use the design rules. What you can do is you can apply design rules to specific footprints like this capacitor, and you can apply those design rules to specific component classes. So let's take a look at an example where we want to increase the clearance large enough around this capacitor such that it eliminates all of this fill in between these two pads. So to do that, I just go up to design and rules, and I need to create a new clearance rule. So this clearance rule, I'm going to entitle it just cap. In the area where the first object applies, I need to use a custom query. And the query we wanna use is has footprint. In the has footprint option, we use this footprint for our capacitor. Then we wanna change the distance between the copper and the SMD pad. Now, this is really important because if you look under the advanced section, you'll see here that copper actually contains two options. There's polygons and there's fills. And I think this is the better reason to use the design rules instead of using cutouts, because if you use a polygon cutout, it only affects polygons. If I'm using the design rules, I can then set this for regions, I can set it for fills, I can set it for polygons, whatever I need. So I would just fill in, for example, 15 on all of these different values, so 15 mils. And then I wanna make sure I set the correct priority. So I wanna adjust the priority here by moving this one up to the top. Then when I hit close and then hit okay, you'll see here that immediately it flags a DRC because the pore already existed in this layout. It's already less than 15 mils. So all I do is just re-pour the polygon and there you go. You can see that it increases all of that clearance around this pad. Of course, it doesn't just increase it between the two pads, it increases it everywhere. So that's one of the trade-offs here. 
Now, we can also apply this conditionally to component classes. And the way we do this is we just go back into the design rules editor. And here under my custom query, I can then use the and operator. And then I can say in component class. And then I can select one of my component classes. In this design, I only have one component class. It's just this component class. However, you could have, for example, top side component class. You could have a bottom side component class. You could have them broken out into specific classes based on their function. So you have the opportunity to set up any component classes you want, and then you can set these clearances based specifically on those component classes. So the way you set up those component classes is you just go into design and then classes. And then you can see here under component classes, there are all these different options. So there are, of course, top side components. I could make this into its own class and give it a specific name. I could, of course, create any new component class I want. And let's say I could make this all capacitors and just add it in, hit OK. So now what I could do is go back into the rules and maybe instead of saying has footprint, I could say in component class new class. So this was the new class I created. So I didn't rename it, but I would want to name this something else. Then I could hit OK, and then I can re-pour. And then you can see it applies that clearance to all of those components in that component class. And in this case, it was all of those capacitors. So now that's applied automatically. So once again, you can see here on this larger component, if I do this with the same clearance on all of my capacitors, it may not provide enough clearance for all my capacitors to totally eliminate the copper between these pads. And of course, that's because for this particular capacitor, this is a 0603 package, while on this one, it was a 0402 package. These are all the different ways you can control that pour between those components, and you don't just have to do it to passives. I could also do it to, for example, this component right here, this EEPROM in this 8SOIC package using, again, either the design rules or the polygon cutouts directly in the PCB lib file. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you haven't taken time to learn the query language in Altium Designer, make sure you learn it. It is very powerful for setting up those design rules and for using filters when selecting parts in your design. Check out the link in the description. We've got a link to a video that shows you an overview of how to use the query language and some of the cool things that you can do with it in Altium Designer. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Keep leaving your comments and questions in the comments section because we love getting all of your questions. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.